हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू माय चैनल एक्सप्लोर विद जोइता Albert Einstein, German-born physicist who developed the special and general theories of relativity and won the Nobel Prize for Physics in 1921 for his explanation of the photoelectric effect. Einstein is generally considered the most influential physicist of the 20th century. Einstein's parents were secular middle-class Jews. His father Hermann Einstein was originally a featherbed salesman and later ran an electrochemical factory with moderate success. His mother the former Pauline Koch ran the family household. He had one sister Maria born 2 years after Albert. Einstein would write that two wonders deeply affected his early years. The first was his encounter with a compass at age 5. When Albert Einstein was 5 years old, his father gave him a magnetic pocket compass to play with while he was sick in bed. He was mystified that invisible forces could deflect the needle. This would lead to a lifelong fascination with invisible forces. The second wonder came at age 12. when he discovered a book of geometry which he devoured calling it his sacred little geometry book einstein had trouble making friends and didn't excel in school einstein seemed to relish problem solving and little else he loathed the busy work of a typical school day and dropped out when he was 15 he did fine in maths but he did flunk the entrance exam to the zurich polytechnic when he first took it when he was about 1 and 1/2 years away from graduating high school at age 16 and hadn't had a lot of french the language in which the exam was given he did fine on the math section but failed the language botany and zoology sections einstein was also a late talker He didn't speak full sentences until he was 5 years old. It is also commonly said that he had ADHD because he daydreamed in school when he was young and was famously forgetful. Whatever he had, it didn't stop him from becoming arguably the most famous and brilliant scientist in history. On April 17, 1955, On one of the last days of his life Albert Einstein was busy at his desk. He was working on a national television address marking Israel's 7th anniversary as a sovereign nation and Jewish homeland. His views shaped by his own experience being targeted by an escaping Hitler's Germany. As he sat and wrote the Nobel winning physicist began experiencing severe chest and belly pain. the most important artery in his body burst like a worn out rubber tire that blew out then shared along the rest of the blood vessel a dire situation that typically leads to death by exsanguination today this event is routinely treated with an arduous multi hour surgery to replace the damaged blood vessel with artificial conduit made out of dacron in the early 1950s These graft operations were still being perfected by surgeons and undergoing it remained almost as risky as the untreated condition. The great mind maintained a realistic outlook on his own mortality. I want to go when I want to go. Einstein told his doctors, "It is tasteless to prolong life artificially. I have done my share, it is time to go." Einstein died of a ruptured abdominal aortic aneurysm on April 18, 1955. He was 76. Smoking makes one roughly 8 times more likely to develop an aneurysm. Einstein was a devotee to pipe smoking. He was typically enveloped in a cloud of smoke when he took his daily constitutional walks across the Princeton University campus. After Albert Einstein's death in 1955, scientists all over the world scrambled for the opportunity to get a piece of his brain. It was a pathologist by the name of Thomas Harvey who got to it first. 
have we removed einstein's brain from the autopsy suit for further study without initial permission from the family he did obtain permission after the fact from hans einstein albert's eldest son after dissecting and photographing einstein's brain some of it was carefully sliced and made into microscopic slides Harvey stored much of the preserved brain in a jar in a cider box. After Harvey, a piece of Einstein's brain went to a neuroanatomist named Marion Diamond, a PhD scientist from the University of California at Berkeley, asking the question, "What makes a genius a genius?" Diamond's lab went looking for answers. The human brain is divided into two parts: right brain and left brain. Left brain controls the right portion of the body whereas right brain controls the left portion of the body the link through which both halves of the brain are connected is called corpus callosum and einstein's corpus callosum was larger than ordinary humans which means his left and right brain had a strong connection because of which einstein could imagine complex problems and situations Based on photographs of his brain this study showed that Einstein's parietal lobes the top back parts of the brain were actually 15% larger than average two structures the left angular gyrus and supramarginal gyrus were particularly enlarged these areas while known to have little to do with iq are linked to mathematical ability visual spatial cognition and became highly active when marking unusual associations on tests of creativity the researchers concluded this was likely the reason einstein could perform the conceptual gymnastics needed to think about time and space with such imagery and abstraction einstein's brain did actually have more brain cells and this brings us back to marian diamond's research and the dissection of einstein's brain what diamond and her research team found was that einstein's brain had a higher percentage of brain cells namely glial cells in brain science neurons get all the glory but the real miracle workers in the brain are the glial cells greek for glue which protect and maintain neurons and cellular networks once thought to simply nourish and support nerve cells These cells have been found to speed communication between neurons and thus affect overall cognitive capacity. Diamond and her team found that Einstein's brain had more glial cells relative to neurons, especially in an area of the brain called the left inferior parietal area, a region responsible for synthesizing information from different areas of the brain. When Einstein's brain was weighed It was 1230 grams whereas a normal human being's brain weighs 1400 grams. Today, Einstein's brain is kept in America's Mater Museum which are preserved in microscopic slides. So friends, this was my video today. I hope you all enjoyed it. If you want to get more fascinating videos like this, subscribe to my channel and don't forget to like and share. Thank you. Bye-bye.